Hi, Riley. Good. What's up, you guys? So we're here in the studio today. It's super gloomy outside. Um, we are in our little holiday corner. We all made these wreaths um, a couple weeks ago. So today's video is all about my mobile workflow. Um, after the 58 millimeter video came out, a lot of you asked how I've been editing my photos. So I'm gonna show you my workflow and the apps I use. So I'm gonna keep shooting to a minimal. Um, I'm really only gonna shoot a couple photos because um, I really wanna focus on editing. But the setup today is the iPhone XR because of the single lens portrait mode that it offers um, and the 58 millimeter. The 58 paired with the 10R single lens portrait mode is just insane, so this is the setup. All right. I'm gonna take a couple of Taylor real quick, even though this video is mostly about her editing style because I'm not as good at photos as she is, but I'm gonna get a couple. Okay, so we're back at the office. I think we have enough shots to work with, um, so let's go edit. Okay, so I transferred all of the photos that we took earlier onto my personal cell phone where I have all my apps and all my um, settings and preferences set. Um, so let's dive into it. So the apps I typically use are Darkroom, um, Visco, of course, Afterlight, and when I need it, Snapseed. So those are the four apps that I absolutely cannot live without. They are essential and vital to my workflow on my phone. The first app I go into is actually Darkroom and I'm telling you, my workflow just got a whole lot easier because Darkroom is now integrated with the Moment app. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Which means that when you're in the Moment app, there's now a button in the bottom center of the screen. It looks like two little mountains, it's two little triangles. It's the Darkroom logo. So you can easily press that button now and your photo jumps immediately to darkroom so you can start editing. All kind of the simple mechanics of the photo I wanna set here in darkroom. So I'm getting, on this photo of Charity, I'm getting all of my mechanics right, straightening it. Um, I want the brightness down just a hair. And that's really all this photo needs. It doesn't need much. This is where I do all just kind of that basic editing. And the reason I do this is because if you ever end up needing or wanting to completely re-edit a photo, um, I find it very helpful to do these things like straighten and expose right and export a version of that so that if you do end up re-editing, which I do a lot just because I think it's fun to edit, so I like to just play around. So yeah, that export I save from Darkroom is a great starting point if I ever want to re-edit a photo, so I don't have to start from square one. So once I have um, the image how I'd like it in Darkroom and I'm ready to export, I'll press the export button and a number of options come up on the screen. I personally like to choose the modify original option just because it'll wipe out my completely raw image um, that I shot and it'll replace it with the straightened and correctly you know exposed option. So now that that's exported I'll jump out of darkroom and that's when I'll go into Visco. Like many people um, it is my favorite app to use for filters, and I've continued to use this app for years and years and years. It's truly stood the test of time. So on this photo of Charity, um, when I look at it, I immediately think black and white. So I'm gonna go to my black and white presets. I'll probably choose a one. And if you can see, I'm toggling between the original and now that it has a preset on it to the edited version. I like to toggle back and forth just to make sure I remember, you know, kind of the original image and what I had in mind when I took it. Um, I feel like that kind of helps me keep the integrity of it. So you can go in and actually adjust the amount or the intensity of the preset on your photo. If you just click down here where your preset is, um, you just click on that and then you can slide and choose the intensity. I actually like the full intensity of this black and white. One of my favorite features of Visco is their grain feature. 
I've just found that in other apps, um, the grain effect can be a little ugly um, and not very natural looking. I find that viscose is really great. So I typically stay around like a two or a 2.5 on the grain slider. Um, any more than that starts to get a little too noisy for me, but I do like a little bit for sure. So I kind of want to pull the shadows in this photo of Charity just a hair. Um, so I'm going to go, I'm still in Visco, I'm going to go to the fade button and I'll probably go to like a 1.3. Just, that just raises the shadows just a, just a pinch. Um, yeah, so it's basically ready to be exported from Visco. So I'll save that. And then to export, you press the three little dots on the bottom right corner and I'll save it to my camera roll and I always save in the original size of the image. So now I'm done in Visco. This is when I will hop over to Afterlight. The main reason I have Afterlight is because of their scratch and dust filters that they offer. They're the best that I've ever seen in any mobile editing apps. So I'll open my image and if you press these two circles right here in the Afterlight app, you'll see the first option is dust. One of my favorite is dust four. It's a very light and very pretty effect. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna choose dust four at full intensity at a hundred. Mm. I'm actually gonna go maybe 70. Yeah, I'm gonna go to about 70. That looks good. And remember, you can do the same thing in Afterlight, just holding your finger on your image to see how you originally imported it into the app and what it looks like with the added dust filter. Um, so I'm actually, now that I'm seeing it, going down to about 65. I feel good about 65. And um, this is where I'll press next and save. And that is an edited image of Charity from today. Um, nice and filmy, kind of timeless, and ended up being really lovely. Okay, so the next photo I'm going to edit is actually one that Caleb took of me today, which is hilarious. Um, but he did a lovely job and I actually love this photo, so let's do it. So I will pull it up in darkroom and straighten it out a little bit. It is quite crooked, so I'm straightening for, let's see, sometimes it's hard to tell what's straight. This image in particular has a lot of lines, so it has the building and the canopy coming off the building and the railings I'm sitting on and a bridge. So there's a lot of lines. Um, so do your best to just imagine you're standing right where the photo is taken um, and line it up that way. That looks about right to me. Um, so I'll press done there. That looks straight, I think. <laughs> this one's a little tough. And I do want to brighten it up just a hair. So I'm going to bring the brightness up. And I'll probably pull the shadows. Probably pull the shadows just a little bit to about 10. I will export from Darkroom. Again, modify original. You press modify so it saves in your camera roll. And then I'll open up Visco. Let's see. Pull this guy up. And for this photo, um, I'll use one of my favorite presets um, from the A presets is A6. It's a very popular preset. Um, very versatile, very easy to tweak, and um, it really does work for so many styles of images. So I'm gonna go to about a 7.5 on the intensity of A6 on this photo. It brightens it up a hair, which I enjoy. And I'd like to bring the saturation up just a bit because it's quite muted. 
So that brings out my hair a little bit and this red and orange down at the bottom makes it pop just a little more, um, which I'm looking for. That looks good. Um, I may go in and toggle my white balance. Uh, the temperature, I might kind of want to cool it off a bit. Um, so I'm going to go to about there. Yeah, I like that cooled off. And then again, I'm going to go to the grain option. And looks like 2.5 looks good. So I'll save that from Visco, export it to my camera roll in its original size. I will open up Afterlight. Again, fourth button from the left, those two little circles, then we'll press dust. Um, another one of my favorite dust features in Afterlight is um, dust five, or dust presets I should say, is dust five. Um, I'm gonna go to like 65. So I'll press the check, press next, and I will save that. That looks pretty cool. Cool. So a quick tip in the middle of editing all these photos, I would suggest taking editing breaks. So taking a moment and taking a step away is definitely something I would always suggest when editing because it's easy to get stuck in an editing hole and it doesn't always work out. Okay, so the next image I'm going to edit is actually from the macro shoot we did last week. That was super fun, I had so much fun doing that. Um, so in darkroom, I am going to rotate this image a bit and crop it um, quite a bit so that the bud fills most of the frame. That looks good. Export that. Then we're gonna go into Snapseed. So the reason I have and love Snapseed so much is because of its healing tool. Um, so if you go into tools on Snapseed and you press the little bandage icon for healing, um, zoom in to the problem area and then just draw over what you want to erase and it will grab a portion of the image just right next to where you chose and um, just replace it with that, which is really easy to do on an image like this. Um, so that looks great. That got, that got rid of that giant black whatever that was on that flower. Gonna export that, save it into my camera roll, which will modify the original. Then I'm going to go into Visco. Make sure I open up the right image. Yep. And I think I'm gonna use preset from the Kodak series. Um, it's, it's a film series that a film series of presets that Visco has. I love KU1, but it's really intense. So I'm gonna take the intensity down quite a bit to maybe like seven. Yeah, I like seven. Um, and then I do wanna pull those shadows up a little bit. So I'm gonna use that fade tool, just a hair. 1.2 looks awesome. That looks gorgeous. Um, gonna add some green. Probably like three. This image can afford quite a bit of grain, so I'm gonna go up to about three there. Save that. Uh, save it to my camera roll in its original size. This image really doesn't need any dust or anything. It looks gorgeous as is. So I'm gonna leave that. Looks great. And the last image I'm going to edit is from our 58 millimeter shoot in California, which was so much fun. So in darkroom for this photo, I wanna get rid of uh, kind of this, I don't know, there's kind of just some busyness here in that top left corner um, that's distracting me from the rest of, of the image. It could be really clean without it. So I'm gonna take that out here in darkroom, um, which is just gonna, which is just going to involve cropping it out and probably rotating the image a bit. So, I'm gonna, uh, I still wanna cut that out a little bit. Let's crop it a little more. How's that? 
That looks great, nice and clean. I'm gonna rotate it the other way, just a hair. That looks great. Export that from Darkroom into this go. And I think I'm gonna use, well, I think I'm gonna use A6. A6 looks awesome. Um, now that it's applied though, I do kind of wanna brighten the image just a little bit, maybe to 0.8 or so. And also now that I'm seeing it, I do kind of wanna tilt it back the other way it was. So I'm just gonna do that right in, in Visco because I'm already in here. Um, so just the adjust tool, that looks better. Um, that looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna go add some grain, probably about three. Um, gonna save that from Visco in its original size. And for this image, because of those dark spots of the ocean in the corners, in the bottom corners, um, adding some dust in there is actually gonna make it look super pretty and it'll make it look like it was actually shot on film. Um, it'll make it look nice and vintage. So dust one actually looks great on this image. So I'm gonna leave it just like that at that high intensity because it can handle it. And I did forget to mention on this, um, this dust slider to the right, your dust is white or grayish. And if you bring it to the left, it actually goes black. So on like a brighter, really light image, you could go, you could bring that slider to the left and have dark dust um, to create a whole different vintage look. But yeah, I'm gonna do dust one up to the right at 100 and that looks gorgeous. Okay, you guys, so that wraps it. I hope that you learned something from this and you found something in here helpful. Um, I do wanna show that simple, minimal editing can take your photos a long way. They can stand alone and speak for themselves really with not much effort. Hope you learned something. You can walk away a little more excited to edit on your phone or a little more confident to edit on your phone. Thank you for watching. See you on the next one. Oh my god.